In this video we will be talking about the grid control. Grids are used to maintain flexible but structured layouts in the view of your application. We will begin with an overview and then apply what we learned in Visual Studio. Also in slides I will have some code examples as we do in this one which shows us how we define our grid in our XAML. What is a grid? A grid is a layout that organizes a collection of rows and columns, a structure that maintains a flexible design, and a control that helps us position other elements. What is a grid used for? Placing child elements at specific row column locations, making sure child elements maintain proportional sizes, allow elements to automatically resize, and overall having a dynamic view for the user. I have a small GIF example at the bottom of an application I made to show how dynamic a grid makes uh, the controls within it. So rows and columns. By default the grid will have one row and one column. If we wish to add more, we do so by using row definition and column definition collections. In these collections, we define the amount of items we wish to have. So in our code example, we have our opening and closing grid tag. And then inside, we have grid.row definitions. And in that, our row definition items. And then we have a grid.column definitions. And in that, we have column definition items. So in this case, we have two rows and two columns defined, and it would display the grid we see on the right. So now let's jump into Visual Studio real quick and actually type all this out. Okay, so now we're in our Visual Studio, and we have a grid set up for the content of our window. And all we're going to do right here is open up a row and column definitions collection and define some rows and columns. So here we'll open it up by saying grid dot row definitions. We'll have opening and closing tags for that. And then we're going to say a row definition. And then because we want to, we're going to call another row definition. And now we're going to call a grid dot column definitions collection and inside if you guessed column definition items so our designer will quickly show us that now we have two rows two columns creating a uh, two by two grid so now we're going to go back real quick and explain exactly how now we are going to assign controls to this grid. Adding controls. So in order to add controls to our grid, we declare the row and column inside the controls opening tag, like we do for properties. So in this code example, I have a button and inside the button I defined a grid.row1, a grid.column0. Margin of 5 is kind of irrelevant, but it's essentially a button that just says I'm a button in a grid. And we assigned it to, well actually code example is wrong according to the picture. In the picture it would actually be row0, column1. The values of defining rows and columns starts at 0. So when I say uh, row zero, it actually means the first row. When I say column zero, it means the first column, which is why this image in the bottom right corner is unfortunately inaccurate, according to the example. Grid spanning. Just like defining row and column positions, we can also define if the control spans across multiple cells. So in this example, I actually moved it into a top left position of grid row 0 and grid column 0. But then I also set a grid dot row span and grid dot column span to 2, which spans the button from its 
assign position, 0, 0, and allows it to move into two cells of rows and columns, creating this 4x4 four four button. I also uh, take note I added in a margin of 5 because I wanted to be able to show you the background of the button, which is the colored cells, to show exactly how it's spanning and where it's positioned. So again, we're going to jump right over to Visual Studio and apply this. Okay, so now we've learned to set up a row definition collection, a column definition collection, and now we have the idea of how we're going to actually assign controls within this grid. So we want to make sure we stay within our grid tags, but we're going to create a button similar to in our example. We're going to say button, we're going to say grid dot row zero, grid dot column zero, close this and say I'm a button in a grid. So here's our button. And again, uh, since I don't have a margin, you'll notice it completely fills the entire grid, which uh, or rather the cell we put it in. Uh, if we wanted some spacing, we would uh, do a margin of, I'll say, 5. As you see, it'll space it a little. But we also covered spanning, which we'll do. And we will call a grid.row span to 2, a grid.column span to 2. And here we have exactly what we had in our example. It's a button that starts at 0, 0, the margin of 5, and it'll span across two columns and two rows. So in this example, we have every row and column is the same height width size. We can define certain rows to be certain sizes, as in heights, certain columns to be certain widths, some to fill, some to automatically adjust, and some to be a fixed value. So we're going to jump back to our slides and talk about that. So the first value we can set for a row or column is the auto value. This value will tell the definition to take the exact amount of space it needs, but nothing more. So in this code example, I set the row definition uh, the first one, it's height to auto, and the first column definitions width to auto. So we'll see in row zero, column zero, it'll only have the height and width that it requires and nothing more. In our row zero, column one, the yellow, we will see that our row has a, uh, it'll only take the amount of height it needs, but its width will fill, and then row one, column 0, our blue, will do the opposite. It'll have uh, an expanding height, but a fixed width. And then in our row 1, column 1, it'll fill the remaining space. Fixed value. This will tell the definition to take the numerical value provided. So in our row 1 and our column 1, we set the height and width to 50. So our red over here in row 0, column 0, will be a 50 by 50 cell. Our row 0, column 1, yellow, will be a 50 height, and then filling in its width. Row, zero, or row 1, column 0, it'll be the opposite. It'll be a filling height, but a defined width of 50. And then our row 1, column 1 again, will just simply fill the remaining space star value. This will tell the definition to take as much space that is available after auto or fixed values have been applied. So in our row definition, our first one, we set it to the star value and set our second row to a height of 100 and similar with our column but with width. So unlike our other examples, we see that uh, our row 1, column 1 has been just filling throughout our examples but in this case we have our row 1 column 1 set to 100 by 100 
and then like in our other examples our row 0 column 1 is going to be a width of 100 but a height that fills and then the opposite for our blue and then our row 0 column 0 which is a fill height and fill width will just fill the remaining space after green yellow and blue take what they were defined to take two star value this will tell the definition to take twice the amount of space it would normally fill this could also be three times four times or five times so in our row definitions our first row is going to take twice the amount of space it would normally take so if I actually put zero values in the row definitions and just left them empty like in our first example our first row definition is going to be twice that size so if I added in another row definition and kept our first row with a two star height it would actually get smaller it's not based on the other rows heights it's based on what it would normally be based on if the row definitions were equally distributed and in our red uh, in our example over here we see the red is twice the size of the blue so we'll jump over to our Visual Studio real quick and play around with at least some of these so here we are back to our old example I did remove the column span row span and the margin for our button because we're going to move on to other examples but first I want to cover at least some of the values we talked about that you can provide to definitions so in our first row I'll just give you an example of if we wanted to set the height to auto notice now it's only going to take the amount of space that the button requires or the content within it requires I could just as easily create let's say we covered a stack panel could create a stack panel let's take this button out of the grid we'll actually add the stack panel to our grid row 0 and our grid column 0 and within this going to put our button but actually going to have to our designer is acting a little buggy there we go so now that we assigned our stack panel to it this is what is defined to row zero column zero and what what it will fit accordingly to so as we get the content in our stack panel to get bigger our row uh, our cell here row 0 column 0 will actually get bigger and it will adjust accordingly could also run the application and notice that as we resize the application it's not going to well it will according to width because we didn't define that as auto so as we expand it our row 0 column 0 will also expand its width but its height will stay unchanged so we could also set our width here to auto notice it'll get smaller because it's only going to take the amount it actually requires and again we'll run and now no matter what we do even if we go past it'll just cut it off it's not going to change at all can also remove and remove I do want to show you by default again it's going to just equally distribute everything if nothing is defined but we'll say hey what if I wanted our first columns width to be twice the size it requires twice the room everything else does well here we have that and as we run it 
See, as we expand it, it will always have the same amount of space in the context of our window. This is good for if you want an application capable of if it went to full screen or if it was really small, it'll always have. So if I always wanted like let's say a image to the side of these buttons or a text block to the side of the buttons and actually instead of just saying that, how about we actually do that? So we'll create another stack panel. Normally you don't want to, uh, at least I don't, assign individual controls to cells. I usually create a panel or some type of container for controls and then assign that container to these cells. So here we're going to say grid row zero, grid column one. So this will be our other stack panel. And we'll say, hey, I want a text block here says I'm a text block okay and we'll actually even so we can see a little better give it a background of say yellow there we go so now when we run our application as we resize this we see that it's always going to take the same amount of space so no matter how bigger the buttons get or how much smaller the buttons get, I will always have that label next to the buttons. Okay, and I personally believe the best way to really understand a grid, because they did take me a second to fully understand, is to just mess around with it. Just do things with it. and quickly you'll start to learn uh, what works what doesn't work and may even discover something new so I would just suggest create a bunch of controls too to help you get used to stack panels and dock panels and just place them throughout grid add more rows and columns so just add more of these and you can add other controls and see how they react to when you resize windows and uh, I actually think you could learn quite a lot of just messing around with it than necessarily listening or watching how they work. So, just want to say thank you for watching. Uh, and I'm sick of saying this at the end of every video, so this will be the last time I say it. But uh, I am just experimenting around with how I produce videos, uh, how I structure them. How I explain things if you think I'm over explaining under explaining uh, if you think I need to move at a slower pace or a faster pace or whatever you might think just leave a comment uh, even if you're inclined to dislike the video uh, just leave me a comment and tell me why uh, I'm looking to improve on things and I'm choosing to do the experimentation in the control portion of uh, the videos I will be making because I think not that they aren't important, but I think you're still able to absorb what I'm saying, even if I'm using a not-so-good method of saying it. So, thank you for watching, and subscribe, like, or leave a comment.